snack of cookies with catsup. Male Mouse had delivered the box of cookies to him that morning. It must be fun to be Male Mouse, bringing people their mail, thought Dragon. It makes people happy and full. Dragon thought about Male Mouse. Male Mouse has a bag filled with mail that she delivers to lots of folks. Sometimes she hands them their mail. And sometimes she leaves it in their mailbox. It's from me. And sometimes she gives her friends good advice. It will make you feel much better. Dragon started to imagine what it would be like to be Mail Mouse. He realized there was lots and lots of mail to sort through. And so many different places to deliver the mail to. He had mail for Ostrich. A letter for you. And mail for Beaver. And whoops, a big, heavy parcel for Ostrich. Hello, Dragon. A parcel for you. Oh, thanks. And another letter for Beaver. He had lots and lots of mail, and it was very, very tiring going this way and that. So Dragon decided if he were Mail Mouse, he'd just phone everyone who had mail and read their letters to them. It would be so much simpler that way. And Alligator, your Aunt Mabel says her bunions are... He was a very clever dragon. Dragon the Builder. Dragon had imagined what it was like to be his friend, Mail Mouse. I should try imagining I'm my other friends, he said. So, he thought about his friend, Beaver. I think you need another hobby. Beaver has a nice big pile of stuff, stuff he builds things with. Move all the things to this side of the room. Beaver is also very good at telling people how to build things and what to do with things. Wanna get this thing going at top speed? If it's at full power, it'll suck up just about anything. And Beaver has really big teeth. Dragon imagined he was his friend, Beaver. I'll chew a tree with my big teeth, just like he does. I wonder where I should start. Dragon decided the middle of the tree looked like a good place to get chewing. After he'd added mustard, of course.
Dragon discovered chewing trees is harder than it looks. Maybe I should think about what it's like to do other, simpler beaver things first. Oh, like building something. much trickier than it looked. No wonder Beaver got so grumpy sometimes, realized Dragon. <laughs> Swamp Dragon. Dragon was having fun imagining what it was like to be his friend. I wonder what it would be like to be Alligator. Alligator loves to dance. And play his bongos. Lots of noise. I can't hear you! <laughs> Being alligator would be lots of fun, thought Dragon. Dragon imagined walking just like alligator. And then he imagined dancing like alligator. <laughs> Most of all, though... I want to play the bongos and make lots and lots of noise, just like Alligator. Dragon stood the way Alligator does when he plays the bongos and got bongoing. It was fun, but... I can make way more noise than this, decided Dragon. And Dragon did make more noise. <laughs> Pounded and pounded away on his bongos, making an incredible racket, just the way Alligator would. He made so much noise pretending to be Alligator, he gave himself a terrible headache. Dragon. Dragon had been imagining what it would be like to be his friends, Male Mouse, and Beaver, and Alligator. It was fun seeing what it was like to deliver the mail and chew on trees and play the bongos. what it would be like to be my friend, Ostrich. Not only does Ostrich run her store... Oh, oh I've got just the thing! Hello. She also tries very hard to be a superhero in her spare time. I am a superhero to the rescue! Ostrich is always trying to rescue folks who she thinks need rescuing. Save me! Whether they want to be rescued or not. From what? And Ostrich always does her special superhero yodel when she goes rescuing. I'm a superhero to the rescue! Hoo! Dragon imagined that he was Ostrich and that someone needed rescuing at that very moment. I'll save you! shouted Dragon. And then he tried to do Ostrich's superhero yodel. I am a superhero to the rescue! <laughs> oh, 
deer. After yodeling like a superhero, Dragon then tried to do Ostrich's superhero dance. Now it was time to rescue somebody. Ahu! I am a superhero to the rescue! Here I am to save the day! Said Dragon, just like Ostrich. Dragon hurried over to rescue a flower which had fallen over. I'll stand you back up, declared superhero dragon. <laughs> I am a superhero to the rescue who. <laughs> dragon was happy. He'd had great fun imagining he was Mail Mouse delivering the mail. And Beaver chewing a tree and Alligator playing his bongos, and Ostrich rescuing someone. Mom! He was glad he had such good and different friends. But now, Dragon was just going to be Dragon. And have a nice big snack. <laughs> Dragon's Boogeyman. It was late at night and past Dragon's bedtime. Dragon had stayed up to finish his monster book. Ooh. Even though he knew it was just a story, he felt just a tiny bit scared. But I have nothing to be frightened of, he said. I'm safe at home. Oh, the only monster in here is me. So, Dragon headed off to bed. Good night, cat, whispered Dragon. Yes, everything was nice and peaceful in the house. What was that? Ah, uh -oh. it must not have been anything, realized Dragon. Dragon closed his eyes and started to drift off to sleep. Oh. There it is again, worried Dragon. There was definitely something making a definitely scary noise. And it was yeah. right behind him, wasn't it? Hmm. It was just the window rattling in the breeze. Dragon felt very relieved. There was nothing scary to worry about. But he decided from now on, before going to bed, he would only read nice, happy books about bunny rabbits. The Monster Under the Bed Reading his scary book had made Dragon a little bit nervous about going to sleep. Even though he knew there was nothing to worry about, he was safe in his bed. But just to be sure, 
he decided to look around his room one more time. I'll look in my closet just to make sure there isn't anything scary hiding in there. wasn't anything scary hiding in there, but he did remind himself to oil those noisy hinges in the morning. He was about to go back to bed, but stopped to look under the rug just to make sure there wasn't something scary hiding under there. No. And he looked under his pillow, just to make sure. Now the dragon knew there wasn't anything scary hiding in his bedroom, he felt much better. He was all ready to fall asleep. He wiggled his toes, yawned a big yawn, and... I forgot to look under the bed. Of course. If something was going to hide in his bedroom, it would hide under He saw something. He saw something big and pointy and blue. It looked just like his own tail. Dragon felt really silly. Imagine scaring yourself with your own tail. But Dragon decided he would hang on to his tail while he slept, just so there'd be no more surprises. Sound around us. The scary story Dragon had read just before bedtime was still making him nervous. But he knew he was safe and sound in his cozy home and had nothing to worry about. Cat sure isn't having any trouble sleeping, realized Dragon. Dragon decided it was silly to worry. He wiggled his toes and yawned a big yawn. He was all set to drift off to a nice, peaceful sleep. But what was that sound? It wasn't his window rattling in the breeze. It must have been nothing. There it was again. But now it was gone again. Now it was back. Dragon didn't like that sound. It was a scary sound. Didn't Cat hear that sound? He wondered. It was just Cat snoring. Dragon had nothing to worry about. That doesn't sound like snoring. That was snoring. <laughs> That was something else. And what was that? It was just a squeaky floorboard. But what was that? It sounded like it was coming from... The bathroom. Dragon decided it was just too noisy upstairs. It would be much quieter down here, figured Dragon. 
No snoring or gurgling or squeaky floorboards to scare him. All was peaceful. There was just the quiet hum of the refrigerator to help him sleep. But who could sleep with all that food making so much noise? Only the shadow knows. The spooky story he'd read just before bedtime was keeping Dragon wide awake. He'd felt very nervous in his bedroom because he kept hearing funny noises in there. But it was hard to sleep on a sofa. Dragon decided he would rather spend the night in his own bed. Even though my room is filled with squeaks and creaks and spaces under the bed where something scary could hide, said Dragon. So, here I go. It's just sounds. Nothing to worry about. Even a simple hula hoop can seem scary. If you let it. Everything is just fine. All the sounds in the house were normal sounds. The floor made normal creaky floor sounds. Cat made her normal sleepy sounds. And there was nothing under the bed making any sort of sound at all. Everything was just right for a nice, cozy night's sleep. except for the monster in his room. But it wasn't a monster, it was just Cat. Yes, the night is filled with little sounds and shadows and spaces. But there's nothing to be afraid of at all, he happily sighed. Dragon was out strolling, enjoying the nice fall air. When something fluttered to the ground in front of him, it was a leaf. Dragon thought it was a very beautiful leaf and decided, I'm going to take it home. He wanted to find the perfect place to put it. Said. No, not on the pillow. It didn't fit in the vase. Then, Dragon had an idea. Dragon was admiring his clever solution when he heard a knock at the door. Hello! It was Mailmouse. Mouse. I have something special to show you. Dragon told her excitedly. Ooh. Cover your eyes. What is it? Mail Mouse wanted to know, but Dragon wanted it to be a surprise. You can look now, Dragon said. Oh, what's so special about a fridge? 
No. Oh, the sink. No, not the sink. No. The table? Tables aren't so special. Oh. No, said Dragon. Look at the leaf. Isn't it beautiful? Wow! Mail Mouse agreed that it was a very nice leaf indeed. Well, why didn't you show me that first? Instead of the fridge, the sink, the table. Dragon was admiring the very nice leaf he had found when he heard a knock at the door. Oh. It was Mail Mouse. Close your eyes, she said to Dragon. Hmm. I have a surprise for you. <gasps> now open them. Oh. Oh. Mail Mouse had brought him another leaf. Thank you, said Dragon. It's beautiful. Dragon hung the new leaf next to the old one. Wow. If Dragon had thought one leaf was beautiful, wow. he thought two were twice as beautiful. Oh, I'm going to start a leaf collection. Wow. Dragon had fun gathering leaves for his collection. Since it was the fall, he had lots to choose from. Dragon was arranging his collection when the doorbell rang. Alligator was at the door holding a big bouquet of leaves. Hey, little blue dude! He had heard about Dragon's collection and wanted to help his friend. That's real small. As Dragon was thanking Alligator, Ostrich appeared. All right. She'd heard about his collection, too. Whoa. Oh, wow. Oh, that's big. I rescued some pretty leaves for you. She told him. It's a good thing I came along and uh, saved them before they hit the... Uh, yeah. oh. Yeah. Ah, ow. Ground. <laughs> oh, ow. <laughs> On their way out, they promised to bring over more beautiful leaves if they found any. Dragon was happy to have such nice friends. Dragon was arranging his collection when Beaver appeared. Yeah, 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 I just raked my front lawn, he told Dragon. And I didn't know what to do with the leaves. Then I heard about your collection, so... Here they are. Oh. I'll be raking my back lawn this afternoon. See you then. Uh, thank you. Dragon called after him as he left. <laughs> Before too long, all his friends had heard about his collection. And everyone wanted to do their part. Hello! I just stopped by to drop these off. Hmm. I'll keep a lookout for more. Dragon was beginning to wish his friends weren't quite so nice after all. Dragon's friends had been bringing him nicely colored leaves, and before too long, Dragon had a very large leaf collection. But he had run out of space on his fridge door. And the inside was full now, too. Dragon needed more places to put his collection. He tried storing them in the bathtub. <coughs> on his bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
in his suitcase. But he had many more leaves, and he had places to put them. And his collection had grown so big that he had trouble finding Cat. Cat! Here, Cat! Dragon realized it just might be possible to have too many leaves in one's collection. Leave it to me. Dragon's friends had brought him so many leaves for his new leaf collection, his house was now completely filled up. Dragon figured that the best way to put an end to his leaf collection was to make the trees stop dropping them in the first place. He headed out to the forest to have a chat with the trees. Dear trees, he said in a loud but friendly voice, I would appreciate it if you would stop dropping your leaves all over the ground. <clears throat> Thank you. He waited for the trees to reply, but they were very quiet. Dragon was about to repeat his request when he noticed something strange. There were almost no leaves on the trees. At first, Dragon was pleased. Now, no one would be bringing him any more leaves. But then he noticed how stark and bare the trees looked. They seemed sad to him. He wanted to do something to make them look nicer. Then, he had a great idea. Uh, don't go anywhere, trees. I'll be right back. He hollered. Dragon tied the leaves to the trees. He stood back and admired his work. They looked very nice. He realized he wouldn't have to give up his leaf collection after all. He had found the perfect place to keep them. Dragon's Nightlight It was bedtime for Dragon, and he was just finishing his usual mug of warm milk and mustard. He brushed his teeth, and then he got ready to settle into his cozy bed for a good long snooze. Dragon was very cozy. So cozy, he happily wiggled his toes. Good night, toes, he said. Dragon liked saying good night to his toes. So he said good night to his fingers. And good night to his tail. He said good night, dresser, and good night, bedpost. Good night, lamp, <laughs> and good night, ceiling. And then he noticed the moon glowing outside, like it was his own special nightlight. 
And a very good night to you, Moon. He happily sighed. <laughs> the next night, Dragon had his usual warm milk. Ooh. And brushed his teeth. Dragon had slept so well last night. Tonight, he decided to say good night to everything he saw again. Good night, toes. Good night, fingers. Good night, tail. Good night, dresser. Good night, bedpost, lamp, and ceiling. And finally, good night, moon. But something was strange about the moon. It seemed smaller. It looked like the moon was starting to shrink. Moony about the moon. Dragon had begun saying goodnight to his toes and his fingers and his tail. <laughs> and finally, good night to the moon. Hmm. But each night, it looked like the moon was getting smaller. Dragon liked the moon. He decided to ask Ostrich for help. Ostrich hurried right over. She was always eager to help. What's wrong? Asked Ostrich. The moon is shrinking. Oh. Yeah. It is? Oh, that's not good. Said Ostrich. What should we do about it? Oh, oh well, let me, um, Ostrich is some kind of, um, I'm sure there's a way, uh, oh. Ostrich decided they should take a closer look at the moon. Dragon thought that was a good idea. Hmm. But the moon didn't appear to be any closer. We need to get closer. Mm -hmm. Even closer. <laughs> They still weren't close enough to the moon. Ostrich pondered for a bit. Oh, aha! We need to climb up towards the moon. Then we'll get a good look at it. So, Ostrich got on a box to get closer to the moon. Ostrich was now closer to the moon, but it still seemed so far away. Ostrich thought they might get a better look at the moon from Dragon's bedroom window. Yes, the moon was definitely shrinking, agreed Ostrich. Oh, we have to do something about it. Oh. Except Dragon had fallen sound asleep. Ostrich decided she should go to sleep too and worry about the moon tomorrow night. It was past their bedtimes after all. Foul moon. Dragon was worried. The moon keeps getting smaller and smaller. Hmm. Ostrich was eager to help. I'm a superhero to the rescue! Ostrich had even come up with a name for this new rescue mission. Ostrich! Oh, and Dragon, rescue the moon! With a name like that, Dragon knew they'd rescue the moon for sure. All they needed was to figure out why the moon was shrinking. They needed a clue. Ostrich said Dragon should try his magnifying glass. 
A magnifying glass makes things look bigger, so you can take a closer look. Now Dragon would get a good look at that moon. Except... Ostrich was in his way. There it was. Oh, the moon. It's definitely not as big as it used to be. A piece of the moon must have fallen off, decided Ostrich. And if it has, well, it must be around here somewhere. So Dragon and Ostrich went looking for the missing piece of the moon. Dragon wished it were a piece of the sun he was looking for, because then it wouldn't be quite so dark out, and he could see where he was going. No moon so soon? Dragon and Ostrich had looked all over for the missing piece of the moon, but it was very dark out, and they kept bumping heads. Dragon decided as soon as it was morning, he'd go search for the piece of the moon in the daylight. Dragon got up very early and ate a big, big breakfast in case he found the missing piece of the moon and it was heavier than it looked. Ostrich wouldn't be able to help Dragon this time because her head was still too sore from all last night's bonking. Dragon was determined to find the piece of the moon he liked the moon. It was his favorite nightlight, after all. Dragon looked anywhere the piece of the moon might have fallen. Once, he thought he'd found the piece, but it was just the garbage can lid. Then Mail Mouse came by. Did you lose something, Dragon? She asked. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'll help you find it. <laughs> What are we looking for? A piece of the moon. It seems to have fallen out of the sky. Explained Dragon. Hmm. Mail Mouse wanted to know why Dragon thought a piece of the moon had fallen out of the sky. So Dragon told her all about saying goodnight to the moon and how the moon had started to shrink. Well, it must be around here somewhere. He told her about looking for clues with Ostrich and how they realized a piece had fallen from the moon. The moon isn't missing a piece, said Mail Mouse kindly. Mail Mouse showed Dragon why the moon changes. Let's pretend this is the moon. The sun always shines on the moon from the same place. Mail Mouse then explained that the moon moves through the sky. <laughs> because we're on the Earth, we don't see the moon from the same spot every time, so sometimes we see the shady side of the moon, and sometimes we see the lit side. And that's why sometimes we have a full moon, and sometimes all you see is a tiny sliver. There's nothing to worry about. The moon will always be in the sky. So that night, Dragon went to bed and said goodnight to his fingers and tail. Good night to his bedpost, lamp, and ceiling. And good night to the moon, a friend who would always be there for him. He was a very happy dragon. The Complaint. One evening, Dragon was getting ready for bed. <laughs> so
Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Beaver, who lives in the house next door. I've been trying to sleep, but there's a loud, funny noise coming from your house, complained Beaver. Yeah. Uh, I don't hear anything, said Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all quiet now, but there was a loud, funny noise. I heard it, harumphed Beaver. Dragon promised to look into it, and Beaver headed back into his home, grumbling away. No, Dragon couldn't hear a thing. He thought maybe the loud and funny noise was a sound he'd made while getting ready for bed. But suddenly, there it was, a loud, funny noise. Beaver was right. Dragon wondered what it could be. It wasn't coming from Cat. It wasn't coming from the living room. It wasn't coming from Dragon. Where is that loud, funny noise coming from? He wondered. The loud, funny noise wasn't coming from the bathroom. No. It sure was loud. And it sure was funny. <laughs> what could it be? Ooh. Suddenly, the noise stopped. <gasps> hmm. Ooh. And then someone knocked at the door. Uh. It was Beaver. Yeah, yeah, you see? I told you. Yeah. He complained. Yeah, I just fell asleep, and that noise started again. Dragon apologized for the noise. Oh, I don't know what's making the loud and funny noise, he said. Please just find it and make it stop. I need my beauty rest, you know. Yeah, yeah. Beaver was grumpy. I'm hearing things, I don't know. I'm getting older. But maybe I'm getting... It was nice and quiet now, though. <sighs> Dragon wondered how he could make a loud, funny noise stop when it wasn't being loudly and funnily noisy anymore. But then, the loud, funny noise started up again, and Dragon didn't have to worry himself about that. Sherlock Dragon. The loud, funny noise was becoming more loud than funny. Dragon wanted to find out what was causing it. He would have to listen for whatever was making all that noise. He decided he would make a listening device. He would put one funnel against the wall and then listen to the other one. Dragon decided maybe he didn't need a device that would make a loud noise even louder. Dragon decided to use a magnifying glass to see if he could see whatever was making all that noise. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. But he wasn't getting any closer to solving the mystery of the noise. Dragon decided some turnip and sardine cookies might help him think. And he was right. He could hardly hear a thing now. Quack. 
quiet place. Dragon decided to ask his friend Ostrich to come over. <laughs> Ostrich is a superhero in her spare time and loves to help. <laughs> She shouted. <laughs> Dragon was glad Ostrich was here. She would know what to do. I need total silence to concentrate. <laughs> That did not seem like the best way to solve the problem, Dragon decided. Dragon asked Alligator if he knew how to make the noise go away. Oh, I know what to do, he announced. It's like a loud noise, right? Dragon agreed that it was indeed loud. So, all we have to do is make an even louder noise, so we can't hear it anymore. That was an unusual suggestion, but one dragon was quite willing to try at this point. They made such a noise. A huge, huge noise. It was so noisy, they couldn't hear the loud and funny noise anymore. And they couldn't hear each other. Dragon shouted. I think you solved the problem. Pardon? Shouted Alligator. What? Shouted Dragon. I can't hear you. Hollered Alligator. Beaver, however, did not think making an even bigger noise was such a good idea. It's hard to get somebody's attention with noise when they're making a lot of noise themselves. upset about the loud and funny noise he was sure was coming from Dragon's house. Dragon didn't know what to do. He had tried looking everywhere. Oh, I don't know what's making the loud and funny noise. <sighs> Sighed Dragon. Beaver said he would find out for himself. Thorough looking over. Looking good. Oh, yeah. But he could not find what was making the loud and funny noise either. Nope. He was so, so tired. The loud and funny noise started up every time he tried to sleep. He was so tired. He needed to sleep. Right here, right now. And then, Beaver started to snore. Now Dragon knew what was causing that loud and funny noise. But Beaver was so sleepy, he wasn't waking himself up with his snoring anymore. Dragon and Cat went to bed. And then Ostrich knocked at his door. Hello! I finally found the noise! 
It's coming from your living room. She shouted. Bomb family. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> and everyone finally got a good night's sleep. Bomb family. Bomb family. Ostrich to the rescue. One day, Ostrich was looking at her favorite comic book. Rescue all friends in trouble. <laughs> He'll let me win. I am a superhero to the rescue. <laughs> That's it, she declared. I'm going to rescue someone just like my favorite superhero. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dragon was in his garden playing with his new yo yo. Suddenly, he heard Ostrich. I am a superhero to the rescue! I'll save you! This surprised Dragon. He didn't know he needed to be saved. Don't worry! She cried. Dragon wasn't worried because he wasn't sure what there was to be worried about. There! I've rescued you! Announced Ostrich. From what? Asked Dragon. That long-tongued bug you had stuck to your finger. I could tell you were trying to shake it free. But it wasn't a long-tongued bug he was trying to shake free. It's a yo-yo, huh? explained Dragon. Ostrich felt a bit silly. She explained that she was really in the mood to rescue somebody. Dragon agreed that was a nice thing to want to do and wished he'd needed rescuing. I'm sure something troublesome will turn up, he said. Looking for trouble. Ostrich was in the mood to rescue somebody, so she went looking for trouble. Beaver had an itchy spot right in the middle of his back, and he was trying to reach it with a stick. If I can just get my arm bent in the right way. He grunted. Oh, superhero to the rescue! I'll save you! Shouted Ostrich. <laughs> save me. <laughs> ah. oh. From what? Wondered Beaver. Hmm. Oh, this nasty stick! I saw you fighting with it, and I saved you! Beaver explained he wasn't being attacked by a stick and then asked Ostrich to scratch his back. She was happy to help, but this wasn't really the kind of rescuing she wanted to do. Ostrich tried, but none of her friends needed rescuing. She wondered if there were any ants around who might need help. But there wasn't an ant to be seen. I just want to rescue someone. I know, I'll rescue myself. Hang on, Ostrich, I will save you. He'll let you. I'm a superhero to the rescue. Rescuing her.
herself wasn't quite as exciting as she'd hoped it would be. Dragon's Helping Hand Dragon knew Ostrich wanted to rescue somebody. And he decided to help. I'll get my hand stuck in this plastic jelly jar. Now he was really, truly stuck and would need rescuing. Finally, Ostrich arrived. She was annoyed there was nobody who needed rescuing. No, no, not a thing for a hero to do. She muttered. Help! Oh. Then she noticed Dragon sure looked like he needed rescuing. I do indeed, agreed Dragon. Ostrich was very happy, finally. Ostrich decided she needed something to make the jar slippery. Hmm? Ah! <laughs> I know, I'll try butter. <laughs> butter is very slippery. in a tire. A tiresome tire. Ostrich had helped Dragon get his hand out of a jar by using lots of butter. But now he had a tire stuck on his tail. I don't really mind. But he did think it would be nice to get unstuck somehow. Aha! Ostrich tried to peck the tire off Dragon's tail, but the tire was on very tight, and all that pecking was starting to tickle. Ostrich tried another idea. Huh? I know! Wag the tail from side to side as hard as you can! How about this? <laughs> Ostrich asked Dragon to spin around like a top. <laughs> Jiggle his tummy. <laughs> Jump up and down. <laughs> but nothing worked. Dragon was still stuck. Dragon should stand on his head. Well now, said Beaver. Well, that really didn't accomplish much, did it? Oh, I was going to ask to borrow your tire to use as a swing, Dragon. But I see you're using it. Dragon explained that he wasn't really using it. He was just stuck in it. Hmm. You should try using butter. <laughs> Ostrich felt sad. She wanted to be a hero and rescue someone, but nothing was going right. May 
Maybe I just wasn't meant to be a superhero. And then, Ostrich stepped in the butter. Oh, I can't stop slipping! Dragon. <laughs> I pulled the tire off. Realized Ostrich. I rescued you. I rescued you. Shouted Ostrich. Way to go, Ostrich. Ostrich's friends were very happy for her. Ostrich was happy. She was meant to be a superhero after all. I am a hero! <laughs> and Dragon was happy he didn't have a tire stuck on his tail anymore. Because he was all covered in butter and dirt, and he really, really needed a bath. <laughs> favor for Ostrich. One day, Dragon was posing for a picture that he was painting. It's hard work posing for yourself, he was discovering. And surprisingly tiring. Then, hmm. someone rang his doorbell. <laughs> Hi, Dragon. I would like to ask you a favor. <laughs> oh! 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 I meant to do that. Um, I'm going away for the day. Would you please take care of Fern for me? Hmm? I'd be delighted to take care of Fern. But, wondered Dragon, who is Fern? Oh, ha! that's Fern. Fern is my tropical plant and just a bit fussy. Dragon was happy to help. But he wasn't sure how. Since he'd never taken care of Fern before, Ostrich explained. All you have to do is make sure that Fern gets enough sun and water when Fern looks dry. Hmm. Dragon thought that sounded simple enough. Oh, ha -ha. well, okay then. Dragon went back to his painting. But then he noticed. Ostrich said to make sure Fern got enough sun. Oh. But it had suddenly gotten very cloudy. It wasn't sunny at all anymore. Dragon had promised Ostrich. He had to do something. There was a very large cloud in the sky. The sun could not get past. I have to make that cloud go away. So, Dragon tried blowing the cloud away, but the cloud didn't move. Then, he tried to fan the cloud away with a rug. Ah. But that didn't work either. Finally, he tried to suck it up with his vacuum cleaner. But that didn't work either. Nothing Dragon could think of made the cloud go away. He would have to find some other way for Fern to get some sun. Yeah. Dragon hoped Fern wouldn't notice it wasn't the real sun shining down on it.
watering time? Dragon wanted to do a good job of taking care of Ostrich's fern. I think it's time to give Fern some water. That wasn't quite as simple as he thought it would be. Just then, Mailmouse arrived. <laughs> Hello, Dragon. <laughs> Dragon was happy Mailmouse was there because he was pretty sure she'd know a thing or two about taking care of a fern. Hmm. And in fact, Mailmouse did know something. That's not how you water a plant, she said. Mailmouse was right. To do a proper watering job, Dragon would need a proper watering can. <laughs> Dragon decided he would go to the store and buy a watering can. Then he realized, I can't just leave Fern alone. He would take Fern with him. He made sure Fern wore a seatbelt. He made sure the other drivers knew he had Fern with him. And he added some padding, just in case. Finally, Dragon was all ready to go. He headed off to the store, but he drove very slowly, just to be safe. To be extra safe, Dragon honked his horn a lot. It was slow and noisy, but Dragon didn't want to take any chances with Ostrich's fern. On the drive home, Dragon decided maybe he didn't need to honk the horn quite so much. He was very pleased with how much he was learning about taking care of tropical plants. Still watering time. Dragon was ready to give Fern a drink. He had his new watering can. All he had to do was put some water in it. So he filled it up. Now, I'm all set to do a proper watering job. Dragon forgot cats are very curious and sometimes like to chew things. I'll have to do a better job of keeping Fern safe from cat. He found a way to water Fern without cat causing trouble. Now, he would just have to wait until cat found something else to be curious about. Dragon did a good job of keeping Fern safe from cat. But now, it was bedtime. Dragon couldn't sleep. He was worried about Fern. Was Fern safe? Was Fern scared to be alone in the dark? Dragon decided he and Fern should be in the same room. Dragon let Fern have the bed. Fern was a guest after all. He read Fern a bedtime story. Jack and the Beanstalk. He thought Fern might like to hear a story about another plant. Fern's Farewell. Dragon tried to stay up all night watching Fern. He was very worried. Was Fern okay? Luckily, Fern seemed fine. Dragon gave Fern some water and then quickly ate some breakfast. He was very tired. He had no idea it was this much work taking care of a tropical plant. It was almost time for Ostrich to come and get Fern.
Ostrich was very pleased with how well Dragon had taken care of Fern. Hmm. Oh, Dragon, you did a wonderful job. Dragon was pleased that she was pleased. Dragon was going to miss Fern. He enjoyed taking care of Fern. He enjoyed being the sunshine for Fern. And he also enjoyed getting the watering can for Fern. But most of all, Dragon liked painting Fern. Suddenly, Ostrich was back. Ah, oh, Dragon! Ah, you did such a good job caring for Fern. Oh. I got you a little Fern of your very own. Oh. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I have something for you, too. Dragon was happy. He soon figured out how to keep his fern safe from cat. And eventually, he learned ferns weren't really that hard to care for after all. 